Hello, here are some cool expressions and idioms I picked up this week. Some I just learned and others were floating around in my brain but haven't stuck yet. And I'm not a big fan of the word memorize, but you catch my drift. Disclaimer, these phrases aren't for the faint hearted. If you're still working your way up to ninja level English, don't freak out. You'll get the hang of using them soon enough. The first idiom is bring something to bear. It means to use something you have to deal with a situation. For example, the negotiator brought his years of experience to bear on the delicate situation, finding a solution that satisfied both parties. Second one, it's important to bring all available resources to bear when tackling a complex problem. The team brought their creativity to bear on the project, resulting in innovative solutions. The CEO brought her leadership skills to bear in guiding the company through turbulent times. Next one, as a teacher, she always strives to bring her passion for learning to bear in the classroom, inspiring her students to excel. The second one is NIMBY, which is an acronym that stands for Not In My Backyard. The acronym NIMBY stands for Not In My Backyard. It refers to the phenomenon where individuals or communities oppose the construction or implementation of projects, facilities or initiatives in the local area, even if they may support the projects in principle or recognize their necessity elsewhere. Common examples include opposition to the construction of landfills, power plants, airports, highways or affordable housing developments in residential neighborhoods. NIMBYism reflects the tension between broader societal needs and individual or local interests. While individuals may recognize the necessity of certain projects or services, they may resist having them located near the ho their homes or communities due to the potential disruptions or perceived drawbacks. So it's the classic, well, I want to help people. Yes, obviously, I want the government to build more houses for the poor, but I don't want this to be done near where I live. <laughs> there are always people like that, even in Brazil, everywhere, really. So Ningbe is a noun, and here on Cambridge, you can see other example. The spokeswoman said the Ningbe attitudes were delaying the development of the site. So Ningbe here is being used as an adjective. So I think it can be used as both um, an adjective and a noun. Yeah, I've, I've heard this very often due to the general elections that are coming up. Um, so do you know anyone that is having a Ningbe attitude? Now, the next one is plum uh, being used as an adjective. Plum can mean amesha but can also be used as an adjective to describe something that is very good and worth having. So landing that job was a plan opportunity for her career. So it's a very good opportunity. She inherited a plum assignment that would showcase her skills to the entire company. The CEO offered him a plum position with generous benefits and opportunities for growth. Winning the scholarship was a plum achievement for the young student opening doors to prestigious universities. The actor's role in the blockbuster movie was a plum role that catapulted him to stardom overnight. The next one is a stooge. Stooge typically refers to a subordinate or a person who is used by others to do unpleasant, menial or unimportant tasks. Here are some sentences using stooge. The manager's assistant felt like nothing more than a stooge, always being asked to run errands and fetch coffee. Oh yeah, I did that a lot <laughs> when I was a catering assistant. Uh, he refused to be treated like a stooge, standing up for himself and demanding respect in the workplace. The political candidate was accused of using his interns as stooges to spread propaganda on social media. She realized she had been acting as a stooge for her manipulative friend, always doing favors without anything in return. The villain in the movie had a group of loyal stooges who followed his every command, no matter how unethical. Fend off. Now to fend off means to defend oneself from a challenge or attack. And here are sentences using fend off. She had to fend off persistent salesperson at the mall whilst trying to do her shopping. The immune system works to fend off infections and keep the body healthy. She had to fend off rumors and gossip about his personal life after becoming a public figure. The company implemented security measures to fend off cyber attacks on its network. Salvage. Salvage means to try to make a bad situation better. 
It can also mean recovering or rescuing something from potential loss or destruction. Some examples below. The antique collector was able to salvage several valuable pieces from the fire-damaged building. The environmental team worked tirelessly to salvage as much wildlife as possible from the oil spill. Despite the flood damage, they were able to salvage some of their belongings from the basement. After the fraud scandal, he had to make great efforts to salvage his reputation. Bide your time to wait patiently for a good opportunity to do something. He knew he had to bide his time, waiting patiently for the right opportunity to present itself before making his move. Instead of rushing to a decision, she decided to buy her time, observing the situation carefully until she felt confident about her next steps. 8. He doesn't even touch the sides. Now, this one I've been hearing so much. The expression, it doesn't even touch the sides, is often used figuratively to describe a situation where something is said, consumed or used without having much of an impact. It implies that the quantity or amount is so small or insignificant that it barely registers or has little effect. For example, I was so hungry that when I finally got my meal, it didn't even touch the sides. This lecture on sexism in Brazil didn't even touch the sides. So this would convey the idea that the issue of sexism in Brazil is so big that the lecturer is not able to cover it. And the next one is, he finished his work so quickly, he didn't even touch the sides of his to-do list. If you enjoy this type of content, why not become a member of my page on Buy Me A Coffee? If you have a B2 or C2 level of English, you must become a member. You will learn so much. You have access to vocabulary that is not taught online by other teachers, but is vocabulary that is definitely used in everyday conversations with native speakers. In addition, you will have access to the pronunciation course, which is for all levels. And Brazilian teachers are more than welcome. Before becoming a member, you can take the following quizzes to have an idea of what your level is in terms of vocabulary. Hope you enjoyed this post. And if you found it valuable or entertaining, consider supporting my work by buying me a coffee. Your contribution means a lot to me and helps fuel future content. Have a lovely week and here's to enjoying a sip of coffee together. Best wishes.